Hello, today we're going to talk about SQL injection attacks and one thing that you can do to defend against them using PHP. So this is going to be kind of an interesting video because the, the fix I'm going to show you, I literally could cover that in 30 seconds, but I'm going to spend more time trying to show you how this works and why you need to be concerned about it. So this is going to be a little bit of a goofy example, but I'm trying to keep it short. So I've got a, a form here, it doesn't look like much of a form, it just asks for a username. Um, the underlying table that I'm going to be attacking is this one here. So it's called Big Login. It's got all this information about people. Notice people have usernames and passwords. I'm not even going to worry about the password. I'm just going to mess around with the uname uh, field and show you some of the vulnerabilities here. So I'm attacking this table. Um, so here's my form. And so if you do, and so there's underlying queries none. I'll show you how this works. If you put in just some weird username like this, it's going to pull up all the matching users. It didn't get any results, and the underlying query ended up looking like this: select star from big login where you name equals right whatever that string of garbage that I put in was. You can kind of see it happening up there, all right? And that worked the way that it's supposed to work. But let's talk about a way to exploit some of the things that are actually happening here. So we're not going to talk about displaying the table or the form. This is the, the PHP up here that I do want to talk about. So there's a field called uname that we're using. And basically, here's what my query looks like. That's the important thing to understand. So when you search a table, it usually looks something like this. So select star from big login, where uname equals uname. Notice I'm not doing anything with the password. I think you'll understand why in a minute here. All right, that's, that's how just how we structure most of our queries. Um, and then this is the part where we process it. All right, so it seems like a good idea. We ask the user for the username. Uh, we splice it into this query, and it works. But I'm going to show you how to exploit that. So pretty simple so far. Now what you can do is, so if I know what this query looks like, uh, one way that I can exploit it is to go like this. So literally, rather than put in a name, I'm going to put in a backtick. And so that back tick is going to terminate that equal sign right there. It's going to be like an empty equal sign. And it's not going to be equal to any U names. But then you put in an or. And then you can do something simple, which is always true, like 1 equals 1. So literally, it's going to say select star from big login where U name equals nothing. Or 1 is equal to 1. And due to the nature of an or being right, 1 or the other, 1 equals 1 is true. Oh, I, I'm not great at attacking tables. So look at what my structure, what my query looked like. So it was uname equals blank, or, and you see I need a back tick in front of that one. I don't mind making that mistake. It probably helps us to understand this better. It seems really weird writing that, but you have to understand how that's going to get spliced into the underlying query. Now I press submit, and you'll see, well, I don't know if you see, but I got 973 rows. Now I'm, I'm kind of just attacking based on the username, but you could imagine a similar technique could be used for the password, right? You could do that thing for the username, and then for, or, and then for the password, you could throw another or in there. So you see how that kind of worked? And see the query that it generated? It's like star from big login, where you name is blank, or one is equal to one. And since that's always true, I end up you know, getting every row from the table. Uh, you could attack the password in the same way. This is just kind of a hard enough thing to demonstrate that I would just want to keep it simple. So that's what a SQL injection attack looks like. Now there are worse things that they could do, right? Like imagine if I do this, I don't really want to get too carried away with it, but what if I put in a back tick, a semicolon to end the query, and then, uh, you know, and then how about, you know, drop table, right, users or something like that. I mean, you, so there's all kinds of potential threats in this world. So it's called, it's called SQL injection because you are putting in basically unexpected things into this text box, which are changing the shape and structure of the query behind the scenes. Now, do understand that the best way to guard against SQL injection attacks is with this idea called prepared statements, which I will explore later on. But for now, I, I'm not going to do prepared statements because prepared statements and MySQLi, which is what we're using, uh, don't they're not they're not the easiest thing to use. There's this other technique called PDO, which is probably the answer. But let me show you something that you can do with this. So quite simply, it's a horrid function name, but uh, we just have to call a function right here. So instead of just doing what we did, which is just getting the stuff from the form, we want to call this really long function. So MySQLi real underscore escape underscore string. 
and then we're calling a function. So it's kind of like that, right? A big hairy function name, MySQLi real escape string. And additionally, you need to pass it the DBC. So it takes two arguments. First one's database connection, second one's the thing that you want to get. I'm saying that's all you got to do. If you do that, then you don't need to worry about the thread that I showed you a minute ago. So I'm going to head back here. Now I'm just going to refresh, right? Remember this thing that happened? So once I call that function, I get this. Right, I get no results. And you can see what happens. Basically, it takes those backticks because uh, that function realizes that backticks can be used to change the structure of a query and it just escapes them with a forward slash. And you can see no longer can I use this exploit to kind of hack that table. So like I said, really easy fix. Anytime you're getting something from the user via a form and you're gonna be using it um, to query your, your table or your database, you should MySQLi real escape string it. Just understanding that there are some malicious people out there who could manipulate your query and use it against you. And so you can use something like this to guard against some of that malicious input. So like I said, the fix is pretty easy to illustrate. I think the bigger picture is you understanding why you need to do this and, and, and the, the risks involved with how, if you don't do it. So hopefully that helps you to understand SQL injection attacks and MySQLi real escape string. Thanks for watching.